Hi, welcome to the D400 webinar. In this webinar, we're going to show you the D400 and the Rio hardware and configuration, and we're going to show you how to do a 61850 configuration. As an example, we'll provide you with a configuration of 61850 between the UR and the D400. The agenda for today, we are going to configure the D400 uh, and the Rio show you the hardware of the D400 and the Rio. So the first 30 minutes will focus on the hardware of the D400 and the Rio, the front of the D400, the back interface of the D400, the back interface of the Rio. And then we're going to uh, show you uh, how to uh, access our, uh, our manual online and then um, how to order the D400 or the Rio. Also, we're, the next 30 minutes, we're going to talk about uh, as you config, how to configure the D400, how to configure the Rio, how to uh, uh, configure them online and offline at the same time. And uh, the, uh, the last part of this presentation, we're going to uh, basically show you how to configure a 61850 setup with the D400. So we're going to show you, uh, as an example, our, our, our UR relay and how does it get configured connected to the D400 over the 61850 protocol. Talk a little bit about the 61850, cover it a little. And uh, finally, we're going to take your questions and answers and uh, uh, session, and uh, uh, we, we, that will be the end of uh, this webinar. Thanks. As mentioned in the agenda, in this section, we're going to cover the D400 and the Rio hardware. Uh, we have prepared a quick screencast for 30 minutes, which will take you through the Rio and the D400 hardware uh, characteristics. I will come back after these 30 minutes to show you how to do the configuration on the D400. GE Multilin D400 is a secure, hardened, advanced substation gateway that collects metering, status events, and fault report data from serial or LAN-based intelligent substation devices. These devices are connected to the D400 in the substation and collect information from all over the substation concentrated at the D400. The Multilin D400 summarizes the data from the substation devices and makes it available locally or remotely through a standard secure web browser, HTTPS. It supports serial and or LAN connection to SCADA masters, TCP, IP network connections are supported over the built-in Ethernet and the modem interfaces. So the SCADA master, whether it's an EMS, an energy management system, or a DMS, a distribution management system, the D400 can serve all of the data from the substation to these masters that are sitting remotely and concentrate the data, summarize it, provide it to the masters that are sitting uh, remotely while providing a secure hardened um, box, 19-inch uh, rack mountable uh, device in the substation. I'm going to explore the D400 hardware with you. So uh, we start with the D400 front of the chassis of the D400 device. Um, the first thing we see is a power supply. Basically, the power supply in the D400 is a redundant uh, power supply, and there's sensors on the back of the D400 where it will allow you to sense when power is lost to the D400 to provide an alarm on D400 power loss. The redundant power supply can be either 100 to 200, uh, 240 volt AC, uh, basically covers the 47 to 63 hertz, or 100 to 300 volt DC and plus or minus 10%. The other choice is uh, 20 to 55 volt DC. And you can have uh, any combinations of uh, these uh, redundant power supplies in the same uh, uh, D400. So that's the D400 power supply uh, connection on the front of the D400 device. The D400 also is equipped with a compact flash, and this is a user compact flash, mostly used to collect uh, data from the D400 and to be taken offline for analysis if required. It provides an easy way to access uh, user data on the D400. This compact flash is different from the main compact flash, which, uh, uh, which is the home of the operating system. 
of the D400. The D400 have also system status LED indicators. The system status LED indicators are uh, used in order to indicate the status of the power, whether the D400 is in ready state, uh, the status of the uh, network connections, and we can have up to two network cards in the D400 as such. There is a NET1, NET2 indicator on the D400 LED uh, system status uh, display. There is also a maintenance connection Ethernet port. There is a USB, uh, two USB ports which can be utilized in order to um, take data from the D400 and uh, for analysis. Uh, there is also a front uh, maintenance serial port for serial port access to uh, the, the user-friendly HMI that will allow you to, uh, to set up the D400 uh, on, on a first setting with the D400. So basically we've got the Ethernet, serial, and USB communication uh, connection on the front. Uh, the last set of uh, LEDs that are available on the main CPU is the serial port status LED indicators. The D400 can have up to 16 digital, uh, 16 serial uh, communication ports, and uh, the indicator on transmit and receive uh, can show the activity to the user of the D400. Um, all of these parts that I've just discussed, the compact flash, the system status LED indicator, the Ethernet USB, and the serial status, uh, re status uh, indicators, they're all part of the main CPU. The main CPU currently comes in the following uh, five uh, different uh, types. The first one is a 650 megahertz CPU, 512 megabyte RAM with a single Ethernet. Uh, the second type would be a 1 gigahertz CPU, 1 gigabyte RAM with a single Ethernet. Or you can get the 1 gigahertz CPU, 1 gigabyte RAM, dual redundant Ethernet. You can also get the 1 gigahertz, 1 gigabyte RAM, single Ethernet, or the 1 gigahertz, 1 gigabyte RAM with a dual redundant Ethernet port. So 16 GB compact flash. Um, basically, you can either have one compact, one uh, Ethernet uh, card connected, or two Ethernet card connected. So you can uh, purchase the D400 with the proper main CPU that can support either one or two uh, redundant uh, Ethernet. And the compact flash, the user and the main compact flash can go up to 16 G GB in the current, uh, in the current setup. Um, next, I'm gonna discuss uh, the reader of the D400. Um, as I mentioned, there is 16 um, serial ports that can be either RS-232, RS-485, a GFO, which is a glass fiber optic, or a PFO plastic fiber optic connectors. So as you can see, there is uh, eight cards in here with each equipped with two serial ports. This is serial port one, serial port two, and because two by eight means 16 serial ports. The next card is the IRIGB input to the D400. So the IRIGB input slot to the D400 is how we collect the time from the substation so that the events in the D400 are logged with the proper time uh, if they're logged uh, locally. And the D400 has the capability of distributing the IRIGB through the IRIGB distribution slot. So the IRIGB distribution slot, will we can add a card that we can take the IRIGB input and also give it as an output for the rest of the devices to sync of the IRIGB time. Also, we, we explained that the D400 can accommodate up to two uh, Ethernet switches. Um, the 
types of the Ethernet switches. Currently, we support three types of Ethernet switches. You've got the Ethernet 4 port, 10 100 megabyte uh, switch. You also can, we also support the Ethernet fiber optic, hot standby, 2 port, 10 100 uh, base SX. And we support the D400 100 base uh, FX hot standby Ethernet switch. The D400 also have the capability of supporting a KVM slot. KVM stands for keyboard, video, and mouse. D400 is just like your uh, any PC, uh, standalone PC. So we can connect a keyboard, a mouse, and a, a video screen, which will allow us to uh, access the D400 without the need of an external PC. I think that's a, a great um, uh, enhancement of the of the D400 uh, concentrator. As explained earlier, the D400 supports redundant power. The power can be external, uh, provided to the D400, um, either 100 to 240 volt AC or 100 to 300 volt DC. It also uh, we also provide the option for 20 to 55 volt DC. In, uh, this is the top connections. The bottom connections uh, basically provide a sensor uh, for uh, loss of power. So in case the D400 uh, loses power, we can provide uh, um, an output that uh, would highlight that the D400 have lost the main power connection. The Multilin D20 Rio distributed I.O. controller is a standalone small form factor device designed to provide distributed I.O. capabilities for easy connection to the Multilin D400 substation automation gateway through a substation LAN. The D.20 Rio provides an interface to the GE Multilin D20 series of I.O. modules. Not only does it allow for uh, connection to remote I.O., but it also provides a cost-effective upgrade solution for an existing substation. I'm going to explore the Rio uh, device. Uh, as, as we said, it's a small form factor. Um, so the Rio contains the D20 communication status uh, LEDs, uh, the power device and device status LEDs, and the LAN communication status LEDs. Now this LAN communication status indicate the LAN communication status with the D400. Uh, from the rear of the Rio, we've got the two 10100 base uh, for uh, D20 communication with the D400. We've got the RS232 maintenance port, and this is to set up the IP address of the uh, Rio. We've got the two D.20 link channels that support redundant peripheral uh, system connections to the Rio. We also have the power supply, which could be 85 to 264 volt AC, uh, 45 to 65 uh, hertz, or 90 to 350 volt DC output uh, with 24 volt uh, DC 3.5 amps. Uh, or 48 volt DC at 5 amps. The D20 Rio as an application in the field, it will allow our existing customers with a D20 uh, based uh, concentrator like either the D20 ME or the D20 ME2 that have peripherals to transfer those peripherals with minimal outage and uh, no requirement for marshalling cabinet or expansion or modify the engineering drawing or do any field wiring. Uh, as such, the installation cost is very minimal and you can retain your uh, I.O. infrastructure, um, just replace the D20 ME controller with a D400 concentrator um, and uh, migrate to the modern technology which would allow you advanced automation, cybersecurity, 
uh, optimize the configuration methods and uh, also would allow for non-operational data management tools. All of this comes with a D400 and uh, minimal uh, upgrade cost from uh, a D20 uh, based device to a D400 uh, device. The D400 supports uh, many enterprise protocols. Uh, in this case, uh, we're presenting the DMP3 uh, serial protocol, the Modbus uh, serial protocol, the IEC 6870-5-101 and the IEC 6870-5-104. So that's what it serves to uh, client uh, applications, uh, whether it's an EMS, DMS, uh, SCADA master, or a data historian. While the D400 is uh, capable of doing uh, some minimal uh, events uh, buffering, uh, it's recommended to use uh, the, a data historian to record all uh, historical events. Um, the D400, uh, as specified earlier, contains uh, 16 serial ports, uh, supports up to two ethernet uh, switches, and uh, it has uh, a KVM support where keyboard video mouse. Uh, the protocols uh, supported in the substation for the substation devices would include the DMP3 uh, serial uh, TCP UDP. Um, of course, we have a support for IEC 61850 client, which is very popular these days. The Modbus uh, serial and Modbus TCP IP, Hydran uh, devices, uh, generic ASCII client devices, uh, SEL, uh, IEC 6870-5-101, IEC 6870-5-103, and IEC 6870-5-104 uh, uh, substation devices. We also have uh, support for an SNMP uh, client. So the D400 as a gateway, centralized gateway in the substation, not only serves uh, remote um, applications like the EMS, DMS, and SCADA, it also can serve the local HMI in the substation, whether the local HMI is connected directly to the D400 through the KVM switch, or it's a local engineering or a local uh, user uh, desktop, that's sitting in the control room of the substation and connected to the D400 using the substation LAN. Either way, the user will get an active HMI uh, that is uh, based on the D400 role-based protected uh, secure access to provide information about the substation. Another example of an application of the D400 is uh, the D400 once installed in a utility network, it can improve the system reliability. In this case, you can see one of the system reliability uh, examples using um, FDIR, Fault Detection, Isolation and Recovery, um, also known as uh, FLISR, Fault Location, Isolation and Service Restoration. So the D400 as part of a GE solution with either the DGC controllers or uh, and or the UR uh, relays can uh, provide a network recovery and detection uh, for the uh, controller who's sitting um, either at the distribution management system and outage management system or a GIS basically sitting at the centralized uh, um, control center uh, to, to have full control of the uh, network, not only monitor the status of the network, but also control the network. Um, also, as you can see, it can uh, improve the system efficiency, uh, voltage var uh, solution as such, reduce the load in periods of high demand, uh, reduces the losses by reconfiguring uh, the network to balance the loads. Last but not least, um, either the D400 gateway or the D20 Rio 
They both have uh, online brochures, which uh, can be accessed through the GE Digital Energy website. And these brochures basically will uh, specify um, uh, the, the, the hardware uh, setup, uh, basically everything that I covered in uh, this uh, webinar. Um, so for the D400 uh, substation, uh, gateway if you access the brochure at the digital uh, energy website uh, not only you can see the key benefits but you can also uh, see the key um, applications for example here you've got advanced automation fault recording secure remote uh, access um, we've got the data collection and uh, visualization IEC 61850, uh, device redundancy, built in uh, media concentrator, um, as an HMI one line annunciator. In my class, all the students enjoy this feature of HMI one line annunciator. Um, it also have a very uh, strong uh, mathematical control uh, logic which comes free with the D400. Um, uh, we also have a great addition to the D400 which is the logic links that will allow for ladder logic uh, using uh, of course the 61131-3 standard. Um, one of the applications would be accumulator freeze, uh, analog value selection, control lockout, uh, double point, uh, input point uh, suppression, uh, redundant I.O. Uh, alarm management uh, from a fault recording and data logging. Uh, we have a data logger, a trend viewer, a database exporter and uh, ARM or Automatic Record Retrieval uh, Manager which would allow you to uh, get uh, those records from your um, substation relays and uh, upload them for your analyzers to, to go through them. Um, as a secure uh, concentrator, um, it, it have the ability to add a radius server so for a role-based access control, it uh, would um, authenticate the user that's accessing the D400 uh, via a RADIUS uh, server. It has a built-in firewall, which would uh, basically uh, block outbound uh, traffic uh, on an external ex interface and inbound traffic on both internal and external interfaces. Um, basically any uh, any uh, any unneeded traffic will not be allowed uh, to to access the, the D400 right um, so to summarize the D400 has its own uh, built-in HMI that basically eliminate the need for an external configuration standalone uh, software even though uh, we have a standalone configuration software which is the SG config that uh, you can use to configure the D400 offline or you can configure the D400 online with the configuration software that's provided over uh, the HMI of the D400. Uh, to summarize we have covered the hardware of the D400, we have covered the hardware of the uh, Rio, right? The technical specification is available in uh, our uh, brochures. If you want to take a look at um, any of the technical information, it's a 19 inch rack, it occupies 2U, uh, the different power supplies, and uh, the ordering guide, which can be also accessed at uh, uh, our gedigitalenergy.com Thank you. I hope you have a good understanding of the D400 hardware and its application, the Rio hardware, and um, you are able to identify all the parts of uh, the D400 hardware. If not, please go ahead, go back and uh, review the video on the D400 hardware. If you still have questions, feel free to 
uh, either contact me or contact the customer's technical service team who will be uh, happy to assist you. In this section we're going to discuss the D400 software configuration and the Rio software configuration. In order to configure the D400 there is two ways. There is an online configuration which can happen via any web browser. You just open the web browser, put the IP address of your D400. If the D400 has been already given a name, uh, an alias to be accessed by on your network, you can just type HTTP colon forward slash forward slash the name. It could be like if the name is D400, you just go uh, D400. Otherwise, you put the IP address like 192.168.1.20 if that's the IP address of your D400. The same for the Rio, it can be configured with any web browser because it has a self-served configuration system that's uh, HTML compliant, so it's uh, and HTML Java compliant and it's easy to uh, configure it using uh, this self-served configuration. The same configuration can happen also offline. So if you want to accomplish an offline configuration, you can do the offline configuration using our uh, software, sgconfig, which is available via our technical services team. The sgconfig can be downloaded and installed. You don't need a D400 connected to your system in order to configure it. You can configure it offline and then download the configuration once you're next to the D400 or if you're in an engineering environment and you send it to the field services team and then the field services team will be able to download your configuration changes to the D400. As specified, in order to configure the D400, you would need to start your sgconfig uh, device. So once you start the sgconfig, it will provide you with a uh, startup homepage interface. In the startup homepage interface, you get quick links to our support team phone number, uh, multiland.tech at ge.com, or you can access our website at www.gedigitalenergy.com. You can also access our sales support, sales.digitalenergyap at ge.com, and you're welcome to send us any request for training at training.multiland at ge.com. Um, on the left hand side of uh, the screen, you can scroll to see the SG Config screencast. These screencasts have been created in order to assist your field services team in order to accomplish their uh, jobs at hand uh, in the site. So, for example, if you're not familiar with SG Config and this is your first time, you can play this screencast, which is an SG Config overview. And this SG Config overview will explain to you how to access the uh, GE logo button that will facilitate the creation of a project, create the uh, delete a project, manipulate the project name, archive a project. And you can also bring projects from uh, outside of SG Config and migrated using the migration wizard. Um, you can configure the application list. These are D20 platform uh, specific uh, shortcuts. So in order to create a D400 device, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the GE logo, click on uh, new project, provide the project a name, And then to add the device, we have to go to the local repository of pre-templated uh, devices. So in this case, we, the, the devices are the D10, the D20, D25, D25+, D200, D400. So I'm gonna take my D400 device, drop it in, give it a name. Put the IP address as specified you can access the D400 online using a web browser for example in this case HTTP 3.75.21913 and that will give you your D400 login page or you can access it offline. So we're, gonna, we're demonstrating how to access it offline. Uh, I'm gonna disable the secure connection um, and then specify the firmware. It will ask me for a name and password. The default name and password is supervisor and the password will be super123$. If 
this is a pre-configured D400, the name and password could be anything that the utility have specified for it to be uh, pre-configured with, or a name and password that your IT department is controlling remotely using a RADIUS server. The D400 webinar uh, device has been created, ready for our use. We can add a picture from the gallery for the D400 to identify it either using a picture icon or by name. There is many ways that we can access the D400 configuration. We can access it offline by double clicking on the device. We can access it online via the SG config. So I can click connect in here and that will get me to the online screen of the SG of the D400 access. Or I also can access it using a web interface, any Internet Explorer that is HTML and Java compliant will be able to show the D400 login screen. So I'll go ahead and um, log into the D400 and give you a quick tour around the interface of the D400. This is the home page which is basically this home icon will bring you back to the home page icon. This is the one line viewer. In the one line viewer, you will be able to see any single line diagram that you have created for your substation. You can create as many single line diagrams as long as you have the license for single line diagram creation. Uh, this is the uh, alarm interface, which will allow you to see the alarms that are available in your uh, D400. Uh, the, the, the device interface, you will be able to see the communication, whether these devices are online, regardless of whether these devices are serving the D400 or the D400 is serving these devices uh, remotely like an EMS, DMS or a local HMI. The point interface, once we have configured our devices, we'll be able to see these devices um, uh, points list and uh, the status of each point. The historical alarm will allow you to see all the acknowledged uh, events, uh, alarms uh, in the historical uh, event viewer. Um, there is a sequence of event buffer and uh, there is a protection uh, uh, fault uh, buffer and also there is a system log which will show you how many times, who logged in, what did they do uh, on the D400, basically a log of all activity that took place in the D400. Uh, you can also add operator nodes for your operators and there is many utilities that you can uh, use with the D400. For example, you can access it via an SSH uh, access, import a certificate uh, for usage and the uh, automatic record retrieval manager, the ARM viewer, will allow you to see any uh, basically uh, records that has been retrieved, fault records that has been retrieved from field devices. So you can utilize the ARM uh, feature of the D400, right? The configuration part is the uh, most utilized part when we're trying to uh, carry out a configuration. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead with the online configuration and I'm gonna show you how to add a Rio device or a remote IO device. Uh, so on the online configuration, we can go to the network connections. Now there is pre-templated connections that are uh, available to be used, or you can use the client server maps connections in order to create your own templates. If you are dealing with a certain set of devices in your substation, then the client and the server maps are uh, way in order for you to template your devices and share it among your colleagues in your substation. It minimizes the, the amount of time to uh, template a device, which is a great tool. So the, in the network connections, uh, while highlighting it, I'm gonna click on the plus sign. And then uh, while selecting the network connections, I can see all the pre-templated devices. One of the pre-templated devices is a D.20 network client, which is the Rio, the remote IO uh, device that was explained in the hardware section of this video. So we click OK. Now we can see a Rio uh, client that we are building. Click Add. Uh, we make sure that we enable on startup and auto start 
the Rio device upon startup. We can retrieve the Rio configuration and all we need is just to provide the IP address of the Rio device. Provide a name. So the default name and password for accessing a Rio is similar to the de default name and password for the D400, which is supervisor super one, two, three dollar. And I will go download. It's requesting that we reboot the D.20 Rio device for a connection to take place. Once we have finished configuring our device, our Rio device, we can save the configuration. Click OK. Commit the changes. During this time, the D400 is basically reinitializing. It's not rebooting, it's just reinitializing the drivers so that it can load the Rio, load, load the devices that the Rio is communicating with, and then start communicating with the D400 and display the points that are available on the Rio device. The D400 came back and said that it has initialized with the new configuration setting done. Then we click OK. Our Rio device is configured. If we go over to the device or the communication summary, uh, we should be able to see that the Rio will come online. So I'm just gonna disable the communication with the Rio and enable it. You don't have to carry out this step. Sometimes it helps in, in speeding up the uh, communication recognition that the Rio is back online after a reboot takes place. So the reboot of the Rio took, takes, took place. Now we can see that the efficiency of communication is increasing again. Um, some of the lost transactions was during the reboot of the Rio. When we go over to the point communication, we can see the details. Right, and in the details, we, if we go over to the digital inputs, we can see that the digital inputs of the Rio will uh, change value once we toggle the digital inputs that are connected to the C board. Uh, oh, sorry, the S board, which is uh, connected to the Rio. So in this case, we've got 64 digital inputs. And to access all 64 digital inputs um, in your digital input interface, as you can see, the last point is, is point 64, and uh, the starting from point number one. And you've got a lot of soft points. So in here, not only do you see the physical points that are in your substation, but you also see all the soft points that's being uh, provided by the Rio device. And uh, it's, it's all of these uh, points are at our disposal to uh, either send out to masters from this point on or local HMI, a display on the D400 uh, HMI. Uh, also, it's available for, uh, we could use it in our single line diagram. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you how to create a single line diagram to be viewed in the one line viewer. To create a single line diagram, uh, we go to the one line designer. In the one line designer, uh, we need to create a database of points that we will be using in this uh, uh, canvas or in this de uh, design. So we click next. We're going to select a digital status point. And this digital status point will come from the Rio device. Let's pick up DI number two. So we're going to select our Rio device for a primary IED name. And we're going to select digital input number two for the Rio. Click Finish. Do we want to perform another operation? No, that's it. We've got our point. Uh, now we can add any of the functional uh, devices uh, icons in here uh, to, to our canvas. and. Uh, associated with our um, device, with our point. So uh, we've added a switch. We can go to the data source, double click on the data source, select that we want to associate this device with 
a digital status select the Rio uh, DI2 point and click add uh, sorry select digital status the Rio DI2 and select click select and uh, now we have the Rio DI digital input number two uh, associated with the switch uh, we can add uh, a label uh, so in this case I'm going to fix the size of the font in this label change the size of the font in this label and you can change the colors so any of the attributes of uh, these um, functional uh, uh, objects can be changed. If you ever have done uh, vi visual basic programming or any of the uh, programming, this you will find this to be uh, very familiar that you, you can drop any uh, uh, object just like Visio and then um, manipulate any of the properties uh, of this object. So once we are done, we have say we are happy with our uh, single line diagram. Uh, the single line diagram not only has uh, animated uh, objects, you can also have stationary objects, uh, for example, just like the um, just like the label that we added uh, you can have a line you can have a ground indicator and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and save my uh, drawing we'll call it Rio di2 okay and then I can go over to my one line designer open the Rio di2 and then once I change the status of the switch you will see that the one line designer or one line the uh, view the single line diagram is basically following the status of the point in the substation at this point we have added the Rio and the Rio has been pre-configured with the devices. By the way, the pre-configuration of the Rio is straightforward uh, as the Rio device is only, uh, its only function is to adapt a D.20 uh, device uh, or a board. We have five types. We have the A, S, K, C0, C1, C2. Uh, if you're not familiar, the A is a, just an analog. It allows up to 32 analogs. The S is 64 digital inputs. The K is 32 digital outputs. The C0 is about 16 uh, digital inputs, 8 digital outputs. The C1 is 16 digital inputs, 8 digital outputs, 16 uh, analog inputs. And those are AC analog inputs. And then the C2 will be 16 digital inputs, 8 digital outputs, 8 analog inputs, and 8 analog outputs. Okay, I'm going to show you briefly how to uh, configure uh, the Rio device. Uh, hopefully now you have a good understanding of the D400 interface and how to add a device to the D400 uh, interface. Um, as you can see, you can add any device uh, from in the network connection, uh, whether it's a DMP, IEC 6870-5104 device, and all of these protocols have pre-templated uh, devices available for you to add as a uh, master or a slave as a network or a serial uh, device also okay so we're gonna close the interface of the D400 I will go ahead and log into the um, Rio device Again, the name and password is the default name and password that we had uh, before uh, with the D400. So supervisor super123 dollar sign. Okay. 
the Rio at this point is uh, putting priority on communication, not on the HMI uh, HTML server uh, that's serving our HMI. So uh, because it's processing all the communication between our peripheral cards and between the D400, there will be a little bit of delay before loading up uh, the full interface uh, icons for um, configuration. So again, as you can see, is the same uh, interface that we had with the D400. You've got the home page, uh, you've got the communication summary, uh, which show you all the devices that's connected uh, to the Rio, and the Rio is accessing uh, at this point. Okay, so we've got the S board connected, and we can see how many good transactions we had with this uh, S board. Uh, we can also see the D400 as a master being served by the by this D.20 link Rio, and uh, you can see that the pers the efficiency of communication is 100% since the establishing of the communication after rebooting the Rio, and we have about 488 transactions, uh, no failures. So we we can go ahead and look at the configuration. So if you want to configure a device to add that device, the, and, uh, any of our peripheral device, an A, S, K, C0, C1, C2, uh, to, to add these peripherals, you would access the configuration uh, interface online with the Rio. Because this interface not only allow you to configure the connections, but also allow you to configure the uh, users, configure the client maps, configure the uh, uh, system-wide uh, information. Uh, it takes a little bit of uh, time delay before the interface is available for you. Also because the Brio is uh, in constant communication with the D400 and the uh, devices that's being uh, pulled by the Rio device. So we get the interface back for the configuration of the Rio. Again, uh, once we add a Rio uh, device to the to serve the D400 or a, a D.20 client, we have to configure what IP address is this client being served on. So in this case, 3.75 to 1.9.12. That is the address that you will also use in the D400 to identify the Rio. Uh, to load these uh, peripherals of the Rio. And then we add uh, the peripheral just using the add interface. So in this case, I've added uh, another device. We can add a, a third or worst, fourth device. And you can just keep adding these devices. You have to make sure that the uh, jumper settings on these uh, peripherals is equivalent to the jumper settings that we have here. Uh, we can uh, delete a peripheral add a peripheral if required. Once you're all, all of your peripherals are uh, set up properly, you can even give them a name, a device ID. Um, then you go ahead and make sure that it is auto startup is checked. You click on save, click on commit the changes. So it's, it's, it's a two step, it's a save and commit the changes. Uh, the reason for that is you can save the configuration then use it later uh, when I commit it, make it up and running, make it available uh, in the device once it is required. You don't have to uh, just uh, uh, make a change and then immediately it takes, uh, it takes uh, uh, action and start serving the D400 if that's not what is uh, required. So you, you have the option of just saving a configuration using it later. Um, so at this point, I'm just going to close this interface and discard my any changes. And we're done with the Rio configuration. So in summary, in this uh, section, I have shown you how to configure uh, the, the D400 online, how to configure the D400 offline, how to configure the Rio online and uh, uh, with the D400, 
and how to see point changes we also touched on the uh, one line uh, viewer which will allow you to have an animated single line diagram of your uh, substation layout the next section we're going to show you how to do a 61 850 configuration with the D400 uh, for the purpose of uh, this uh, exercise we're going to uh, utilize our uh, universal relay the UR relay and to configure the UR relay we will have to use the Enervista software I'm going to show you very briefly how we configured the Enervista software for 61850 and how we created the file of 61850 um, if you're not familiar with 61850 and it is your first time hearing about it, um, 61850 is a protocol uh, similar to the other pro uh, substation automation protocols. Um, uh, the, the differences in 61850 uh, is that in 61850, the, the, the older protocols were doing polling, uh, were in a polling sta state. So for example, if you're familiar with DMP or Modbus, in TMP and Modbus, we have a polling setup where one master would poll a slave, right? Uh, in 61850, it's a client server, so the client would uh, do a handshake with the server at the beginning of communication, and then the server would start um, basically publishing uh, data to the client at uh, uh, preset uh, intervals. and. Uh, also 61850 is all about uh, simplifi simplification of configuration so 61850 has the ability to minimize or decrease the amount of time it takes to configure or get one device to be uh, uh, introduced to another device or configured in another device and and minimize the engineering time of configuration not eliminate the engineering time of configuration because it's not possible just minimize the uh, configuration time of uh, uh, of uh, one device with uh, with another device so in this case I'm going to show you the D400 configuration with uh, a U universal relay To configure the 61850 in the D400, we have to use the offline configurator of SGConfig. In this demo, I'm going to show you how to configure the UR relay. So, uh, to com in the UR uh, software, uh, we have uh, configured uh, a device, uh, basically an F60 device, and uh, we've given this device an IP address of 14. Uh, we have utilized the simplified goose configurator of the UR uh, software and in the fast goose we have configured uh, points 5, 6, 7 and 8 uh, the on state and the off state so when when we configure these points inside the SG config you will see the points uh, on the, the on state and the off state so when the point is on uh, this value will display as 1 when the point and this value will display at 0 and the opposite will display vice versa um, and these are basically contact inputs number 5, 6, 7 and 8 which we have connected uh, test, test, test set tool uh, to, to show uh, demonstrate uh, the capability of 61850 uh, once the configuration is done we basically write the configuration to the UR relay uh, just simply by dragging the UR setting back into the UR relay and uh, then uh, if you if we look at the product setup under communication 61850 server configuration we would find that this uh, device have already been configured with the uh, name 61850 IED name as a server okay so the next step that uh, we have to do is uh, we have to go back into sgconfig and configure uh, this uh, device before we do that we have to uh, export the ICD file of this device so that it can be picked by the D400 there is two ways to do it we can either uh, export it and use the ICD file or we can um, basically um, uh, ask the D400 to invoke this UR and load the ICD file uh, dynamically from the UR relay. Um, to create an ICD file, uh, 
uh, we right click on the device and uh, we click uh, create ICD file I can name this ICD file you can see that uh, from previous morning sessions we had a couple of ICD files so we'll name this ur3.icd which is under my test 2 in the C drive so I'm just gonna save the ICD file and while the UR relay is saving the ICD file I'm gonna start the SG config um, basically go to the offline configurator or the loader and in the loader I'm just gonna show you how to do it uh, from scratch kind of thing Okay. Um, so we've got our D400 which is um, a, a, a client right and we're going to add a server which is the F60 in order to add the server we have to add a voltage area um, being your voltage area let's say 132 uh, west substation and we select the voltage to be 132 kV and then we add a bay um, Markham IQ and then we add a server once we add the server it's gonna request the ICD file so uh, we go back to the Enervista software okay and our ICD file has been created so we can select or retrieve our ICD file so we click retrieve ICD file and we click on the UR3 ICD in this case so all the information which we previously with other protocols we used to configure like the IP address the points all of that uh, the, the naming on every point all of that has been already loaded and the type of the relay everything has been loaded through this ICD file and this is where the 61850 protocol simplifies the configuration between two devices I'm gonna put the name uh, of the server publisher so in this case it's uh, IED name uh, and we click OK um, it requests whether you really want to use uh, this device and I click yes now the next step is to click on both devices using the control uh, uh, key and hit the connect and that's it your server is connected to the D this D400 client now I can click on the D400 uh, client and uh, select which points I would like to report to this D400 so in this case I'm gonna enable the LD install um, I'm gonna open the logical devices as you can see under the 61850 every device was specified uh, with its own description whether it's a switch whether it's a transformer um, generic uh, IO device uh, multiplexer so in this case I'm just gonna pick up a GGIO uh, device and select uh, the eight points that has been configured when we look at the digital inputs we can see all eight points then we're going to create a report and we have to specify the control buffer whether it's a buffered or unbuffered report so this is basically based on your device or in, on the uh, device in this case the UR capabilities then we click apply click OK exit and save 
And at this point, SG config is basically creating the 61850 configuration of the D400. I'm going to generate this configuration uh, through which SG config confirm that we have done the right 61850 configuration. And this red dot specify that uh, the configuration has not been generated. Once the configuration has been generated, uh, the red dot would disappear if the configuration was generated properly and all of our configuration is proper. And we will get a notification that the configuration has been done uh, or generation has been completed successfully. So because our generation is uh, completed, now we can download the configuration to the device. We can say sync to device. Again, the login name and password is supervisor super one two three dollar. And what we're doing at this stage is we're downloading the configuration that has been generated with the 61850. Of course, it includes our previous configuration of the Rio device into the D400. We're committing the changes and then we're going to reinitialize the D400 and get it up and running uh, with the new configuration with the new 61850. After this configuration is downloaded, uh, if the download is uh, the, and the commitment of the changes is proper, uh, the D400 will be able to communicate not only to our uh, UR relay, to our Rio, but also to the universal relay or the UR relay, the F60 relay. So uh, we can connect online or we can open the offline configuration, sorry, open the online uh, D400 interface. So supervisor super one two three dollar click login and then once we log into the D four hundred if we go to the communication as you can see we have uh, efficient communication for with the Rio device hundred percent efficiency and we have uh, communication with our sixty one eight fifty uh, device so we can go and check the points click on the details and click on the digital inputs as you can see the first points are off the next points are on and that's based on our uh, status of our switches so when we flip the first switch uh, we can see that the point have turned uh, the on state is on and the off state is zero or one the same happens for all eight for all four points that we have configured so as you can see the 61 8 through 61 850 the configuration have taken place in a very simple manner we didn't have to configure all the characteristics of communication it all came with the icd file or from the ur relay to the D400. In the same manner, I'll go ahead and uh, show you the one line de designer with a 61850 point. So I can open an existing uh, drawing that we did, so the Rio DI2 drawing. And I'm going to add another point. Gonna associate this point as I've seen, as you've seen before, with the 61850 device. So 
So I've selected my 61850 device. I'm selecting the DI5, which is the first indication point that's coming to the D400. And then we click OK on that. Highlight it. Click Select. Now it's there is a correlation between the animated object and uh, the point. So the source is set. We can add a label. We'll name this one 61850 digital input 5. Adjust the font size. Select the color that we like, any background. And now we can save this drawing. We can save it either under the same drawing or under a different drawing that we like. So in this way, we're going to say Rio 61850 drawing. I click Save, click OK. And then we go back to our one line diagram viewer we open our 61850 Rio drawing and then once the status of the point changes we can see that the point changes uh, also if any of the Rio points change in status the digital input number two when it changes in status you can see it so as you can see the, the the change that is monitored by the UR system the UR inner vista if I go to the actual values status contacts input I I can we can monitor and see the change in the UR at the same time see the change in our D400 the entire process of configuration did not take more than uh, 20 minutes as you can see that uh, 61850 brings a lot of simplification and you can upgrade your uh, substation effortlessly with a Rio device uh, from a D20 station to a D400 station and take advantage of all of these uh, applications, the 61850 uh, application, uh, ARM, uh, all the facilities that come with a D400 as a powerful data concentrator in your substation. Hopefully in this demonstration you have a good understanding of the D400, uh, how does it work, the Rio, how does it work, and uh, you have a good understanding of SGConfig, uh, the, D, uh, the uh, Rio configuration, the online and the offline configuration of the D400. I hope you found this uh, webinar useful and uh, please feel free to contact us at GE Energy uh, Learning and Development Training Department. This is a um, uh, D400 webinar was part of a series of uh, webinars that uh, we are providing and the webinar will also be available on uh, YouTube for your download. You can reach us at training.multilandge.com. Uh, our phone number is also 905-927-7077. And uh, I thank you for taking the time to participate in this webinar. We hope that you will join us soon uh, in future webinars that uh, to come from our GE Learning and Development Department. Thank you.